So let's get started. So Lisa, welcome. Thank you for joining us for Joomla User Group of New Jersey to teach us everything we need to know about the Cassiopeia template, but no pressure whatsoever. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Uh, lots of familiar faces here um, and, and names I already know. Um, nice to meet you. Also nice to meet everyone new here who doesn't know me. My name is Elisa, as uh, already known. I'm from Germany. Uh, I live in um, nearby Stuttgart and uh, Schwäbisch Hall. Uh, maybe I show some pictures later on if we have time. <laughs> But I think uh, you will have a lot of questions about Kasapaya. And hi, Joe. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Laura asked me to make a presentation about Kasapaya, and I said yes without knowing anything about it. Uh, some of you might think that I was maybe part of the Kasapaya team. Um, I was for a very short time, but uh, to be honest, I did not contribute uh, anything. So all the applause is uh, on the shoulders of someone else. And yeah, um, last time I, uh, last week, I took some time to um, dive into Cassiopeia and to see what's possible. And I think it's uh, very good that I show you how it works because um, I have also like an outside perspective on it and um, had to gain all the information about the template myself. Um, the first thing I want to show you, and here's the obligatory, let me share my screen. Um, I have here a fresh Joomla installation on my local host. And nothing done yet. I just installed it like five minutes, no, 10 minutes ago. And first thing is that I will show you where you find Casapaya. You find it uh, if you go here on the system menu item. Oh, it's locked out. So you click on system and you end up on this overview here. And there are different boxes um, for setting up Joomla, for installing something. And here's a box called templates. And here you find the site templates and the site template styles, and also the administrator templates uh, and administrator template styles. Um, to change something um, in Casapaya um, template, you click here on site template styles and you have here the default template style which is assigned to the page. Um, I open the page in the tab so we see always the, the results. So this is the blank as, a pie as, um, as it is when we install Joomla. Um, I switch back to the template and you see here uh, Casupaya and the this is the default template. And you have here, when you click on this title, you have different settings you can change already about um, Cassiopeia. Here in this advanced tab, you can change the brand means the logo of the template. Uh, brand is activated, it's yes. If I click on no and click on save, and reload the page, you see um, the whole um, banner is gone at the top. I go back in the template settings and I click on brand yes. And I will select here a logo. I click here select and the new media manager has here the Joomla logo. I select it, save. And when I go back on the tab and reload, I have hit the Joomla logo inserted. And here's also found something, um, it's called tagline. It's actually a uh, um, text which is shown below the logo. Just type in here, hello, click on save. 
And when I reload the page, you see there's this hello below the, lo the logo. And if I don't have any logo, I can just um, remove it. And alternative to the logo, type here, it's my cool website. Save. And when I reload it, it says it's my cool website and the tagline below. These are the brand settings I can make in Cassiopeia template. Then we have here uh, a setting that's called fonts scheme. And I can select here from three different fonts. Uh, the one font is Roboto. And Roboto is a good readable font and it's loaded local from uh, the template folder. It's local because uh, also the backend template is using Roboto. And in some countries, um, it's uh, from the GDPR obligatory to have the fonts uh, locally hosted. And then here are two more, more fonts, um, fonts from web. Um, Fira Sans, it's more um, playful font. It's still uh, a good readable font, but a little more um, playful. And the Roboto and Notosans font uh, from loaded from the web. Um, here you have uh, a message that if you don't load the uh, the fonts from from the web, it might have a performance impact on your website. Um, this for the font settings. Um, there's no possibility to add something to the list as far as I'm concerned. I looked uh, for solutions if you can add some fonts here, uh, but I think no, uh, but we will come to this later on uh, when we talk about customizing the template. Then you have here a color theme you can select from. It's standard and alternate, alternative. Uh, the standard one is this um, purple theme. And when I select alternative and click on save, I have here like wine red color or how to call. That's the alternative team theme. And there's currently a PR uh, made by Brian Tiemann on GitHub, uh, which would introduce uh, the possibility to add here more presets. Um, if you like this feature, um, you can test it on GitHub. I will um, provide the link later. Um, so there will be the possibility to add here more presets. Then we have here a setting for the layout. Uh, you can choose between static and fluid. Um, when I select fluid, you see when I reload the page now that it goes on the full width of the website. And um, here's a sticky header option. You can select yes. And then I cannot demonstrate it now because I don't have enough content on the website but uh, the header will be sticky on scrolling. Well, I can demonstrate it like that. It's sticky at the top, yeah. And last but not least from the main style settings, you have your feature. It's a back to top link. If you select yes and save this, you have a back to top icon at the bottom of the page. Again, we have to scroll a bit here, which um, navigates you to the top of the site if you want to. So this is all you can do in the template style itself. Um, in the next moment, I will uh, jump to the module positions and the settings. Uh, before doing that, do you have any questions about uh, what I just showed? Was something too fast or did you not understand something?
So Richard added to the chat the GitHub request that you mentioned, um, the pull request uh, mm -hmm. that Brian's Thank working you. on. So everyone has that. And I am also taking some notes as well. So when I post this to the website, um, I will include some of these notes. Um, and Max mentioned about installing the, I'm assuming installing the demo content, but that's okay. We don't, we don't need the content. Does anyone else have any questions? Oh, keep going. Okay, uh, so yes, uh, installing the demo content, I found out like um, also 10 minutes, uh, 20 minutes ago, that it sets up your Casupaya completely and you don't have to do anything. But I think it's good to, to know the basics about the template and how to set it up yourself, because if you install the demo contents, you have a lot of, um, yeah, demo articles and then you have to clean up your whole page and remove everything you don't need. So maybe it's good to know how to set up the basics yourself. And um, maybe afterwards I will click on and so sample contents and you see how it looks like when, when the sample contents are installed. Elisa, I have one uh, question about adding mm -hmm. the SVG logo. Um, to upload, when you upload a different logo, can you do a logo in that module position instead of using this logo? Or is that something you'll talk about later? Mm. I had this question today from um, Michael. Michael is also here. Um, you could disable the brand here if you want and maybe publish the logo, uh, the SVG code from the logo in a module position. And, and then you have the SVG code there. Um, for that, you of course need to um, check the tiny MCE filters um, that your SVG code is not cleaned up in the module. Um, and the second possibility is uh, to add SVG as supported format in the media manager. Um, and then you can upload a SVG too. The only thing is, um, as far as I saw on other websites, I already started on uh, working with Joomla for, is that you don't see the contents of this SVG. You see like a transparent box but you don't see um, the contents, but you can still use the images and, and upload them if you just set it up in the media manager. I what think position you have... would that be? Is there a position called logo? Yes, uh, that's, that that's, a, that's a topic I want to talk about now, actually, about the oh. module positions. Um, it's, um, you can find out which module positions you have by clicking here on a link. Um, if you don't have a link here, uh, but the message no preview available, you can enable the preview uh, in the options here at the top. And that's the same like in Joomla 3 now, you click on options and then you have this preview module positions and you can enable it. And when you click save and close, you have here now a preview link. And when you click on it, it opens your template in a new tab. And you have here the module positions from the uh, Casapaya template. But um, I'm not sure if it was different in Joomla 3, I think so. Um, it seems that not all module positions are listed here. That's why I created a overview and I will share it with you later. So you don't have to take notes. Everything I will uh, tell you today, you will find uh, under a link I will share with you. And um, yeah, that are the module positions of the Casapaya template. You have the top bar, um, you have below top, you have brand which is unfortunately not a module position. It's just a position for the, let's say brand utility of the template style. That's not a module position. Then you have the menu module position. 
search banner, top A, top B, breadcrumbs, sidebar left, main top, which is inside the component area, sidebar right, main bottom, again inside of the component area, bottom A, bottom B, footer and debug. Very basic, but you can customize those module positions um, and the CSS later on. So those are the module positions. And now let's see how to set up the modules. The modules are in Joomla 4 now in the content um, menu item. You find it here at site modules. And when you click on site modules, you have here the breadcrumbs, the main menu, and the login, login form. And let's see how the menu looks like here. You see here, main menu and home. And you maybe want to move the menu to the top here below the logo. For doing that, um, you click here on the link of the module. And you see that the module is published on the position sidebar right. Let's see, it's here on the sidebar right and we want to move it in the menu position. Okay, let's say menu and I will maybe hide the title and click on save. And when I reload the website, I have here my home menu item already at the top. And when I add more menu items, let's do that quickly. I don't know how many of you already worked uh, productively with Joomla 4, but it's so fast. Uh, if you take use of this plus icons here and, and, the, and get used to the navigation, it's so fast. Um, yeah, it's really fun, I think, to work with it. So menu item two, select, what do I select? Um, let's select first a single article. You, I think you know that you can create an article directly from the menu item. Save and close. Let's create a new one. Your item three. Okay, and let's put the menu item three below the menu item two as a parent. And when I reload it now, we see home and menu item two and the menu item three is not visible because we need to set up the module, uh, the menu model module uh, more. So let's close the menu items and switch back to content side modules. And here in the main menu, we have to do some more. So the first thing is in the advanced tab, we have here the layout. And Casapaya template comes with two alternate layouts for the menu. The one is a collapsible uh, drop down, and the second one is a simple drop down. The difference between those two is that uh, collapsible drop down, let's save this. Um, you have in the mobile view um, the burger, burger toggle for the menu, 
and uh, at the other one the menu is just stacked let's let's look at it you have your home and menu item two and you have here the drop down and when i look at the mobile view you have the toggle here and when I switch uh, the layout to not collapsible drop down, but to drop down and save it. It's just stacked. There is no toggle. So that are the two options for the drop down. Yeah, and that's basically all you can do with the menu for now. Um, the other thing I would like to add for you is the side header, the, the banner at the top of the template. Um, you know it from the Casupaya de demo content and from the demo websites. Um, yeah, let's add this banner at the top. You click uh, side modules again, plus or here, and add a custom module. And here in the title, you can write whatever header. I hide the title anyway. And I publish it on the position banner. Let's look at the positions. Here I want that it's displayed here below the menu in the banner position. Here in the editor, I can just write um, hello. Welcome to Curse Your Pyre. Maybe I make it a heading. Okay, and I center it. What else to do? We can check the menu assignments of the module. Um, it's now displayed on all pages. We can just select the home item. And here in options, I can select the background image for the banner. Let's select the space image. It's here in banners. And let's check in the advanced tab if there's a layout. There's a layout override from Casapaya template. And I select this. And when I click on save, and reload the page. Nothing there because I'm not at home. Here's the banner. <laughs> Laura. <laughs> so pretty. That was beautiful. <laughs> and just to backtrack real quick, um, Richard did put a note about a GitHub request about showing all of the module positions. So I'm just adding that to the notes. But guys, look how beautiful that is. Core. Okay, keep going, Elisa. Does anyone have any questions? It's great. Thank you. So um, this is the way when how you set up modules. You put it on the module position, and the uh, favorite part about is uh, it's not from Joomla four. It was already there in Joomla three. Then you can select layout overrides and customize uh, the output of a module. And I even took some just mod custom modules and uh, made overrides for it. Or uh, uh, my most favorite module to override is the newsflash module. I made uh, like sliders and, and different uh, displays of modules. And that's a really good thing. So it's really powerful. And I'm glad to see that Casapaya uses overrides too, because um, it can be a showcase for others how to make own overrides. Um, now I want to talk with you about how to customize your template. Um, to customize the template, you need to add uh, user.css file and you can add it if you uh, click here on system. There are two ways how to get there for now. Um, 
there are some updates I, I have to talk about later, but um, for now you have two ways to get there. If you are already here on the site template styles or click it by accident, happens too, you can reach the template by just clicking here on Casapaya and you are in the template files. The same thing, uh, or the same uh, page you can reach when you click here on system and click on site templates. Then you end up in the template manager. You have your preview of the template and click here on Cassipaya details and files and you have the same view open. So there are two ways how to get there. Um, I add the spoiler now. Uh, it will change in very short time. And Joomla 4.1, uh, you will have a unified view for templates. Uh, there will be no separated view anymore. And uh, it will change a lot about how templates are managed because you will have um, child templates in Joomla 4.1. So maybe we can trash my whole presentation afterwards, but I'm, I'm happy to investigate into child templates too and come again. <laughs> um, so for now, use a CSS file. You Click into the template and you have this view open and to add a new file, you click here on the new file button at the top. And then a, a model window opens and you write here the file name user. You select the file type CSS and stop, don't click on create yet. You have to select the CSS folder here. It's very important that this is selected. Um, I'm teaching a bunch of kids about uh, Joomla. And even if I told them that they have to mark this uh, folder, um, like half of the class did wrong, and the user CSS file did not end up in the, user, in the CSS folder, and then the uh, template does not recognize it. Uh, so be sure that it's marked. Click on create, and then we can check if the user CSS file is in the CSS three here. So it's there, all good. Um, so what's next? Um, I need to know from you, how good are you in CSS? Can you write it maybe in the chat? Just go for it. Well, today, I don't think you have to teach the purpose of CSS, but just show examples of things that you've done. I think will be perfect. Okay. Um, just, um, yeah, um, you can read it up later because I prepared a blog post about CSS uh, and, and Casupaya. Um, and I added some CSS basics, how CSS works, because without knowing how CSS works, it will be hard for you to, to edit or customize the template. Um, I show it to you later. Um, let's see. Just skip the CSS part in my script. And I go here. So I prepared um, user CSS file for you as a demo. You can download it later from my website. Um, I put the code now here in the user CSS and will explain to you what, what I did here. Is this big enough to read for everyone? Okay. So um, there's no possibility to uh, add a font to the drop down in Casupaya, but you can add your own fonts, fonts to the template. Uh, two ways. One way to add fonts to the template is uh, like just referencing the 
Google uh, web font. You can do it by import URL and here you write which font you want um, to import. You can find the code um, in, at Google itself. Let's open the Google web page quickly. Yeah, so if there's a font you want to use, maybe maybe color font, you have here the styles and you can select which style you want to use later on your website. And Google already writes you here um, how, you can, uh, how you can add the font to your template. Here's a link or you can switch to import and then you have here the import uh, code you want to copy and paste into your template. And if you want to use this font later, you just um, use this font family statement to use this font later on in your template. Elisa, There's, I have yeah. one question with reference to the font. You mentioned that some countries due to GDPR requirements do not allow yes. you to use the web-based fonts. They have to be local so if you do the import is that considered local at that point or no it, it really needs to be local in the template it really needs to be local in the template then in germany uh, it's um, very strict so if you connect your website to any outside um, service like youtube web fonts um, whatever uh, you have to uh, first mention it in your uh, privacy policy and um, you need to offer the opt out of it. Um, so when I'm here on, for example, this website here, uh, there's a cookie banner. And when I don't accept uh, the cookies, um, here's a Google Map, for example. And if I don't accept the cookies, the Google Map is not loaded. Um, the fonts are actually local here, so they are loaded. When I click on accept cookies, the Google map appears here. Okay, thank you. Just wanted to confirm, but we're going to work on it exactly as you did it with the importer, however you want to bring the content. I yeah, just there's to up to everyone. There's another possibility. Um, I just lost my, my script uh, where my links are. Just one moment. There's a very nice website where you can download uh, the Google fonts and use it locally. And they provide also the code already that you can use in your CSS. One second. Yes. So Charles has a question, no cookie, no map extension. Um, he was curious of what extension you use to do that for the cookies. And if you prefer, we can talk about that at the end of the session. Yeah. So we'll, we'll bring that up at the end. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so um, here's the Google Web Fonts helper. I provide all the links at the end also. You, you don't have to write it down. Uh, the Google Web Fonts helper has, so I think almost all of the Google fonts. And you can select the styles. You have here the font face um, statements for your website. That's uh, how you reference to the fonts when you use them locally. And you can download the web font files here. So you put this into your CSS and then you need of course to create a fonts folder in your template. And then you can put the downloaded fonts into the fonts folder so to make it work. That's how you can use the fonts locally. 
Perfect. And we're also getting some links in here and I'm going to be sharing all the links afterwards as well. Okay. Um, so here at the top, I import um, this Georama font and uh, you can download this user CSS file later also. And I put comments into it. So you remember what it was for. Um, here at the top, you have um, the possibility to change some basic colors that are used in the template. Um, here's some Casupaya ones. Um, there's a color primary, link, and hover. And let's just disable this stuff for the moment. And also this. So we just see the changes that are done when you change here the colors. So I reload the website. And you see now a gradient from green to red. It's the primary color and the hover color. Um, maybe we could improve the variable names in future because um, it's like for me the secondary color. Um, but with those colors, um, you change here the gradient at the top and here the link. Uh, actually, red is also over. Well, maybe we can add a secondary color um, variable in the root. So we Melissa, have. When you, um, I know you're going to give everyone a link to this CSS file, but when yeah. you created this user.css, did you copy this from Cassiopeia and put it as you, or did you type this from scratch? I typed this from scratch. Um, Nuts. Okay, anyway. <laughs> I, of course, that are uh, variables that I used in Cassiopeia. Uh, but the other things I wrote from scratch, but um, it was like that um, in, in summer, I'm teaching a class of kids for a full week, Joomla, um, five days, five hours per day. And uh, the kids are between 11 and 14, and the, uh, each kid made our own website. And I also teach them CSS and how to change the colors of Cassiopeia. And I needed to give them examples on how to change uh, the color of a button, how to change the color of uh, a headline and so on. And um, also some kids had own ideas how, how to put a background image behind uh, a specific element and so on. And that's how this user CSS file uh, was created. And I'm happy to share it because I think it's a great um, start for everyone to learn it. And um, for everyone who's not familiar with CSS, um, you really just need to know the basic things. And it's maybe a half hour of uh, focused reading and, and uh, seeing uh, what, uh, what are the rules of CSS. And then you have a really good start and can uh, create a nice override for your Kasupaya template. So, okay, um, that are those colors. Can I change them here? Yes, maybe do something nicer. Let's see. What happens now? Okay, I like this more than the green and the red. Okay, um, let's change some of those things here. Um, here, I copied some Bootstrap styles because Casapaya is um, based on Bootstrap 5. And some of the styles I use some not, I'm not sure which are used from here. I don't think they are used very much. Um, but what is absolutely used is the body font size, for example. Uh, it's set here to two REM, means uh, two times the size of the default browser. Um, browser font size. 
Then here's the body font weight, uh, the line height of the body, the body color, means the font color, and the body background. If I save this and reload the page, okay, nothing happens. Oh yes, I don't know. What did I do? Maybe I did not hear my cache. I'm confused. One second. Okay, I need to investigate into this later on. It worked before. Um, no so idea. So the file you're modifying is Cassiopeia dash. Is that the folder that it's in? User.css? Yes, it's the folder I showed before. Uh, it's yeah. here the CSS folder, and here's the user CSS file. Oh, got in it. it. That's the right file. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have to clear the local Joomla cache? Uh, maybe I have some styles afterwards uh, that are changed. I, I don't know now. I don't know. Uh, we have some debugging going on. So uh, Canon <laughs> mentions that in PHP Storm, there's an error in your file. I wonder if you have an extra uh, I see the error two on the top right. I see an exclamation point with the two There's on the top right. Here. What uh, happened here actually? Let's thank you, let's, debugging everybody. Thank you. Let's the hash just, did not change according to Max. I maybe don't delete the whole thing. Yeah, I deleted it because I. <laughs> I broke it somehow. There were way more lines that it should be. Well, there's no more errors now, just warnings. Ah, wait. Let's see. Did you save it? Yes, now it works. Okay. Yay. Oh, thanks, Thank you, everybody. everybody. I'll, okay. I'll cut that out in the recording. So only you guys are going to see it to get there. Because my recording, she's going to have it right there. OK. okay. <laughs> well, you don't actually don't have to cut it out. You know, uh, making mistakes is something everyone can learn from. <laughs> and um, yeah. So if you make the same mistake, you know, you know where it comes from. So I, I don't know, maybe instead of cutting, I just um, pasted the code again and then the error appeared. So here um, in this variables from the bootstrap five, you can change the basic bootstrap five stuff. And um, as said, I don't know, where this colors appear exactly, maybe in the alerts and the warnings and so on. Um, maybe the gray appears in the cards. I did not investigate yet. I just copy pasted the bootstrap default variables, but that ones um, that are responsible for the body font size, like you see here, two REM. Elisa, we have I have a question about mm -hmm. how you're using PHP Storm to edit the live file on the server. So do you have PHP Storm installed on uh, this Joomla server so you're able to update the file? Or what are you doing? You can so I have PHP Storm opened and uh, the website is locally on my local host. And I just edit the files and um, yeah, and reload it on the website. I, I'm not sure if this answers your question. I think it does. Yeah, Anne, does okay. that answer that? I think that's great. Yes, that's it. Good, thank you. You you see, meanwhile, that there are way more changes than just the font size and the font type and so on, like here, the, the shade behind the, the box and so on. 
it's because I uncommented everything, but uh, let's go through it. Um, I have here um, in, in the body, I use the imported font at the top. That's the very first thing I, sh uh, I showed you, that uh, if you use this Google font, Google um, makes uh, gives you a style to copy and you can just use it where you want to use it. You can also um, use the, the font just for the headlines, for example, you don't have to use it in your body, just copy this line where you want to use the other font. Then we have uh, the page header of Kasupaya. That is um, actually with this uh, gradient from green to red. But I uh, made here override of the style, which is uh, in Kasupaya, and defined the gradient from this dark blue to this uh, cyan color. And it looks like this now here. And you can make your own uh, gradients or backgrounds. You can add here background image into the header here at the top. Um, there's a nice helper. I lost my site again. Where is it? I know why I did not open the links in the new tab. So. Okay, I have here a nice helper for everyone who hates um, writing down the code. You can just define the colors for your gradient here and define how you want to have it and say if it's psychedelic or not. And then you can just copy the code to your clipboard and add it into your header element here. Save. And then let's see. Beautiful. Okay. So there are a lot of helper um, how to create such a gradient. Um, because sometimes writing down something like this is, um, yeah, it's, it's a little bit hard. So you can just uh, use the generator. Next thing is a smaller banner. I forgot. Ah, yes. Um, container banner. Let's disable this. It's actually for this one um, to make the banner a little bit uh, smaller from the height. And for that, you can change the CSS of the container banner full with, ah, that's because, um, wait, it's maybe because I have the fluid layout. Let me check. So Elisa, I have a question about mm -hmm. Cassiopeia and I don't know if maybe Richard would be better to answer this. Um, when you update Joomla, will it always come with the new version of Cassiopeia if it's updated or is Cassiopeia as the template gonna be a separate um, update? Because one concern of using a core, something that's tight with core like that is you may not want the update right then and there because this is affecting the overall look of your site. Yeah. Any thoughts so, on that? The one thing is to prevent that. You can copy a template. There's just a, um, what, not here. But sometimes you want the update, right? Like, 
So it's, yeah. it's a catch 22. So yes, you could copy it and then make it as your own. Um, but it's more of having the control of when the updates come through. So um, the one thing is you can copy Kazupaya um, and then, yeah, track the changes yourself and see what, what changed in between. But um, in Joomla 4.1, there will be the child template thing. Um, and maybe this changes how you will work with templates and in Joomla in general. Richard, you know the yes, answer. Yes, Richard, come on in. Well, two things. The first thing is uh, if you update the core, also the core up templates are updated, but uh, a user CSS is never touched. Right. And you can have a user CSS also for the backend template. Also, that one is never touched. But what if the update, let's say you put something in the user.css that works lovely. And then when you run the core Joomla update, it could break something in the user CSS. It's difficult to backtrack because Cassiopeia is not a separate installation. I can't say I'm gonna upgrade Joomla but hold off on any changes to Cassiopeia until I make sure it works. That should not happen because the user CSS is loaded afterwards. So user yeah. CSS is always at the bottom and anything what happens in Cassiopeia uh, does not touch the user CSS. And the other thing is uh, if you make a copy of your template because in a template copy, you can do funny things. You can also add other fonts font scheme, yeah? Uh, there is mm -hmm. no button for that, but it's possible you can edit the XML file and you can uh, add a, 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 an S CSS or CSS file and then you have made such customizations and you can make overrides, you can change the files in the copy. And then in Joomla 4, there is a fancy thing which is called the override check. This shows you if you are, uh, uh, when you do an override for anything, and now you update that, what you have overridden, for example, extension. And then uh, this shows you, aha, uh -huh, there has been something changed in an update for an extension or the core for which you have made an override. And then you have a, a, a view where you even can compare that and can see what has changed compared to your override. Would it make sense to wait until after Joomla 4.1 comes out? To no. A no. copy of the Cassiopeia because of the changes that are on coming up with Joomla 4.1? No, these changes are not uh, concerning the template itself, except okay. maybe a few include path, but I think even that is, is not changed. It changes the template manager. Ah, okay. So as Back long end, as... How you manage your okay. templates. Uh, now, uh, uh, now you have... Uh, a template and you can copy that. And you have different views for the template itself and for the template style, which is the parameters which are stored in database. In future, these views will go together and you will not copy a template anymore. You will create a child template. That, that's a more convenient way because when you do a copy, you have to, to, to you copy everything and you have to maintain everything. When you make a child template, it is a little bit what people know maybe from WordPress. I think they have something like that. And, uh, and this management will change, but I think the template itself will not change. But then and it does make sense. Oh, there is no to need wait. to wait. But, you, but if we did decide to wait and then create a child instead of creating a copy of the template. Um, yeah, okay, no. that could make sense if you want to wait that long. On the yeah. other hand, uh, uh, you can start to make your copy now and, and, and start learning. Of and course. Already yeah. when the child templates come. Great. Thank you. Other questions? I'm sorry, Lisa, if I put no problem. other questions. No, no other questions. Sorry, I just rammed in there for our questions, but. No problem. Elisa, um, keep going. Okay, so um, the, the banner height I wanted to show you was not applied because I had the fluid. Um, well, maybe I'm not on the fluid. Um, 
I can define here the height of the banner. And if we look at it, I can change here the height to whatever I need. Yeah. Then we have here color the drop down menu and the menu with the class MIDI's menu. So when I go here on the drop down, this background is set up here. Let's see, let's make it yellow fish. So you can change the color of the drop down with this. And then, of course, you need also to change the color of this, but here it, it looks good, white on the yellow. That's the item color of in the, inside the drop-down menu. Mm. Then we have, uh, let's make the banner smaller again. Then we have here um, the cards. That, that's the card for the login form. And I added here a box shadow. I can make this a bit smaller. So you can see the effect on um, like this. There's surely a nicer way. Okay, I changed the shadow behind the box now. It doesn't look good. Let's just disable it. But you have this as an example inside the file. Then we have uh, the background of the card itself. And you see here in the CSS style that I address the main top card. So if I do something here, I set, for example, the background to just black, nothing happens because I don't have any main top module. Um, if you look at the code here with the inspector, you see here the classes. And this module here on the right has the class side by right card. And to address just the modules that are on the right side, I have to type in this class sidebar right card. If I reload the page, it has a black background here. So you can also make all cards in a specific color. If I just address the cards, and I reload it, and then all modules that are that have the card layout look like this. Then we have um, headings. I don't have any heading here. Maybe I have one here. Actually, not. So it's not an H one. It is. H1. Ah, I had here a dot uh, above the CSS, that way. that's why it didn't work. So I have here text shadow and a color, and the H1 is colored like that. You can change it. And here yeah, it's changed. Um, then this is the code to um, color the buttons. Here's a button. The button has a green border around, and when I hover the button, it gets um, cyan. And that are the, that are the codes for changing the button color. Um, then I have here a style for the item image with a border around it. Let's go into the back end into one of the articles and I will add a image to one of the articles. Here in the images and links tab, I just select something 
maybe again, more space image. Sorry, so the full image. Now we are here. So you have here the red border around the item image because every image of the article has the class item image. You can add our own class to it. Uh, here you have the field image class be below the full article image. And you can add here our own class, um, just anything. Or uh, you can add predefined classes that are already um, used in Casupaya. I come to this right afterwards. Uh, but you could just write here, um, for example, green border. Save it. And nothing happens, of course, because just when I write green border, nothing can happen. But when I write here, green border, Elisa, I have a couple of quick questions. Um, yeah. One is confirming that the file name does have to be user.css. And Richard said yes, um, because that's already in the assets, assets JSON. Um, mm -hmm. But he also mentioned you can save the minified version as a user.min.css, then the minified version will be used as long as debug is not switched on in global config. Mm -hmm. um, and then another question is, could you use any class from Bootstrap? I'm assuming you have to use, it has to be Bootstrap 5, correct? It has to be Bootstrap 5. And I'm actually not sure if um, Cassipaya is based on Bootstrap. So it takes just some classes of it or not. Maybe someone here knows. Richard, can uh, you confirm that? Is it based on Bootstrap 5? So you can use any class in Bootstrap 5 or is it just specific ones? Don't ask me if you can use any class. Uh, uh, Cassiopeia uses Bootstrap 5, that's right. But Bootstrap 5, in opposite to previous Bootstrap versions, is modular. That means it's not a big J JavaScript and, 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 and CSS file. Uh, it, it is more smaller files for different purpose, and you load only what you need. So if you need an accordion, or then you load only that. So uh, I, I don't think uh, Cassiopeia uses everything. Uh, a good starting point is to look on the CSS files or the SCSS files, the SAS files, which are already there. And then you can see what Cassiopeia does. Uh, these are, for example, overrides for the bootstrap classes. And if there is something like that, then you can be sure Cassiopeia uses it somehow. But at the end, it's like Elisa said, look at the markup, look at, uh, uh, at the HTML, inspect the HTML and you see what classes are there. Yeah. Okay. So if, if you want to add accordions or something, I think you have to add them in the, um, in the CSS because if you look here into the template folder into the window folder and here's a strip folder, there's just a few bootstrap as CSS. Files. Yeah, but, but that's not bootstrap. That, that, that's, the, the naming is a bit, bit misleading. These are the oh, overrides okay. over the bootstrap. Uh, these are modifications on bootstrap stuff. The bootstrap okay. stuff itself is in the media folder, which you can't access from here. And uh, that's what I've forgotten when we talked about the child templates. The big change on child templates will be that uh, the media is located in the media folder and not anymore below the template folder. That will be the big change which will be coming. Mm -hmm. And here, uh, all the vendor stuff uh, is in the media folder. And what you can then find here in, in the template, these are the overrides of that. Okay, thank you. 
And I have one more question. If um, can you also mention about the Bootstrap JavaScript loading? You said what? The bootstrap. Not sure. Joe, Joe just asked a question about the bootstrap JavaScript loading. Yeah, there are actually a lot of scripts that are loaded. I don't know. Um, there must be a possibility to unset them. Uh, or when you want things that are not loaded. If you want to include other things, when you want things that are not loaded. Is what um, that when you have to have a copy or later on a child template from Casupaya and use the web asset manager, um, I can share a link to the web asset manager documentation later. That's actually. Okay. Yeah, Joe mentioned like for tabs, for example, if you want to load yeah, that. Yeah. Um, yeah, then you would need to add it through the web asset manager. So this uh, Casapaya template is really very basic. Um, however, it, it also uses the, um, the backend template when you do the front end editing and there are the tabs inside. So I'm, I'm not really sure what, what you have to do if you want to use tabs. Uh, I have to investigate uh, in this later on. Because if you do front end editing, you have the tabs in the front end. So you, the, there must be the possibility that you have tabs in Casupaya without loading any external script, I think. Thank you. That was perfect. Mm -hmm. um, keep going. I'm sorry if we delayed. So just to give everyone a heads up, it's it's uh, we've been about an hour and five minutes. Um, if Elisa is able to continue, would you yeah, like him? <laughs> You're OK. All right. Yes. So marathon it. We're going to keep going and um, go. Thank you. So um, yeah, I just changed here the class uh, to, to green. I put here just our own custom class, green border. I edit it here and you see that the image in the front, sorry if I click so fast, uh, the image of the uh, front end is now uh, here with the green border. Um, yeah, so let's see what we have left here. I have here, uh, the style for icons, if you have icon, or style for all icons that I used, uh, you can define the color for it. And here's the style for the footer. We have no footer yet. We quickly add one. Where's the copyright? Oh, let's take this. Let's put it in the footer position. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so here's the footer with the color. So this is the user CSS file. That's not a complete file. That's just a few examples what you can change in your template. And um, it doesn't look good, as you see, but uh, at least you will remember it. Uh, what else? Um, one moment. The user CSS. Yeah, um, I showed you why doing this here and why also debugging uh, that you have here the browser console. And if you want to ch change a specific item in your Joomla website, you just click here with the inspector on an element and here it's highlighted and you have here the class that you have to change. And I share with you a very uh, basic uh, how to CSS um, document later. Uh, so you can learn how to write the dot, where to write the dot, where to write the colon and the semicolon and so on. And then you can try it yourself. Uh, before opening for questions, um, I want to show you one more thing. Um, Casapaya 
oh, sorry, let's remove the custom code because my eyes hurt. Ah, nice. So beside Bootstrap 5, um, Cassiopeia is also based on CSS grid. And that's a very, very nice thing. And for me, I'm, I'm in the web business since uh, 21 years now. And um, I, I was really hesitating to learn CSS grid because uh, yeah, it was quite hard to learn. And most of the browsers uh, did not support it, but now our modern browsers support CSS grid and it's really, really nice and, and fun to uh, create websites with CSS grid. And that would, um, that would be too much to, uh, to show you how, how CSS grid works, but um, if, you, uh, if you inspect the site, and let's see the site grid here, it's the site grid. I hope you can read it a bit because ah, oh, I can make it this larger too. Yeah, you see here the CSS code for the site grid. You see here the grid template areas. We have banner, 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 top A, top A, top A, and so on. That are all the module positions and also the component position that is defined here in the site grid. And you can just copy this um, and paste it into your user CSS and play, uh, play with it. And um, you could, for example, put the banner of the site. Oops. Yes, I think I hope it's right what I did now. Let's see. Oh, it's not so easy to write in here. So anyway, um, you can put just the banner of, of the site at the bottom with CSS grid. You can define the positions of your modules with CSS grid in the, um, in the CSS and also how many columns they take and so on. Um, let's just reload the site here. And if I click here in Firefox on this grid, you see the grid of the site and the columns that are available. And yeah. So for example, if you had bottom A, by default, bottom A will go across. So if you have four instances of bottom A, it will by default go across. When you're in a cell phone view, it will automatically stack. CSS grid is making that happen. If yeah, you can define basically everything in CSS grid, how, where something is pos positioned. Um, there's, let me and then share. Ellen has a question too, which I'm gonna do next. There's one article, here from Joomla 51, they were quite involved into Casupaya development. And here's very good explanation how CSS grid works in general and also the Joomla template. So you can just define um, um, how, how the elements spread across the site. And there's a second, um so but by default by default in cassiopeia it automatically goes across that's that's the way it's originally set up but you can set it so bottom a is always stacked yeah no, so it, here it's set banner 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 and top a top a, top a and so on uh, but you could um right here top b next to it And now it's uh, top A, uh, two columns above each other, and top B, two columns above each other. So there's a lot uh, you can change from, from the layout just by changing the CSS grid. And um, I, I love this. Um, there's a CSS grid free 
online course by West Boss. Um, it's completely free and it's really worth it. You can just um, make um, the lessons and after, uh, after the lessons, you are CSS Grid Pro. So, so I have this... another question, um, mm -hmm. which I think is a great question, something you may be able to show easily. So Ellen asked about making the sticky nav bar transparent so you can see the banner under it, and then it goes to solid on the scroll. And that would just be in user.css. Um, to define the background of sticky to be one way and top in another way, I'm assuming that can be done. So one thing you can make it sticky. Um, and the second thing is um, the top banner position. Let's see how it's here. So yeah, once it, it actually starts just here, container banner. And the grid is here. So this grid is. So basically, I think, just... Ellen, is this correct? You want a different um, background depending on if you're on the scroll versus if it's just straight across. Correct, Ellen? Just making sure we're asking. But I. I've seen that before where on the sticky, you want one behave it to look one way. But so it depends on the layers that they created. If the sticky can be isolated. So when you're in the sticky movement, when you're scrolling, it could have color X. Yeah, she's saying yes, yeah. Like that? Well, yeah. yes, but when it's not sticky, yeah, a different color. So basically, when you're on the regular menu view, it's red. Yeah, Once so if you're yeah. scrolling, it's implementing the sticky view to have a different mm -hmm. color. Okay. So, so here, color either way. here yeah. in the Casupaya template, um, if you can see it here, you might have to create an override to do that. Let's see. Um, no, you don't have to um, create an override, but um, here at the position sticky, you see when I scroll, nothing happens to this header in the class. No class is changing at scrolling. That means that um, you, you cannot add any CSS class to, to change the appearance of the menu at this point, because it's always sticky at the top. But um, the same as you could uh, add user.css file to the CSS folder, you can add a user.js file to the JavaScript folder. And then you can say, uh, if the viewport is minus whatever, then, um, then add a class to the header, which means uh, I scrolled now. Um, you can just copy paste it from Stack Overflow. Excellent. Yeah. Now, does that answer that? So you would create a user.js JavaScript. Yes. You, yeah. you just create here in the, in the site and templates. You, you copy the code, basically. Yeah, um, there are many codes like that. If you, if you search for a scroll down at class JavaScript, there's add remove, ah, stop, no jQuery. So uh, there's no jQuery in Kazupaya because uh, jQuery, you, you don't need it anymore. You can just use pure JavaScript, which is also called vanilla JS. Um, but here's something vanilla JS change at class based on scroll position. So you maybe could try out this code and, and here's also the CSS for it. And maybe this already works. Here's a reference to CodePen. I like CodePen a lot too. And yeah. Thank you. We can, I, I add this link to the chat maybe because it's not- Yes, in my... add it, I'll put it on. 
to my notes. I'm, I'm taking lots of notes that I'll share with you and we can we make a good team. Okay. I just don't know where the chat is. <laughs> um, you found it? I, I just send it to you directly because, That's ah, fine. here's the chat. I got you. <gasps> I was boycotting Zoom a very long time because uh, it was so unsafe in the past. Is it better now for you? I hope, I hope. <laughs> at I some point I could not, you at some point I could kids. not, huh? You can't use it for your kids, right? Of my what? Your kids, your training, your classes. Your ah. Training. No, no, that for, for the training, um, Zoom is, I think, not allowed at any school in Germany because of uh, the security reasons. Um, the schools use mostly big blue button. Mm -hmm. uh, I sent the link later because I'm on the Zoom app. That's fine, that's fine. Um, what other CSS grid. Yeah, one more thing to show yes. you. There are some yes. CSS grid predefined classes in Kesupaya without needing you to change anything uh, in the use of CSS. And um, that are settings you can make in the block uh, and in the article. And I'm not sure what will happen when I click now on block center data, but I need it. Let's see, maybe it breaks. Let's see what happens now. Oh, well, okay. Fair enough. So um, I just installed some sample contents because I want to show you something in the block. You have here the block uh, page, the, the block, uh, how is it called, category block. And you have here some sample items. The block has two columns. When I click here now on menus, main menu. Main, not, not this main menu, this maybe? Yeah, this one. And I edit now the block menu item. I have here the block layout tab. And in this block layout tab, I have here the leading article class. I, I can put here some different classes and uh, like boxed. Boxed means that there's a box around it. And columns too means that I have two columns. I can change it to three columns by just typing columns three. And then it's three columns here. And it's possible up to four. So when I reload it, I have now four columns here. And I have leading articles and intro articles. I can say that I want to have one leading article in just one column. And four intro articles, and I copy paste it here with four columns. Let's check how it looks like. So I have here now the leading article, and here three columns because uh, there's no fourth article. Let's do it in three columns now. So these are settings that you can just do by adding a class. Um, the, beside the columns class, let's change back to this. You have also a masonry class. Uh, who knows what is masonry? Does someone know? Uh, masonry is like a, a blocks that 
building blocks. Slide, yeah. That that slide into each other. So the block is not um, with the same height. You see that the articles have your different heights. If I reload it now with the masonry, uh, that was stupid, wait. Masonry four class. I reload it now. It's not saved yet. But now, so masonry four is just as high as it needs to be. Let's take masonry two so you can see how the boxes float into each other. You see the next box begins where the top one ends. That's the masonry layout. So I have yeah. um, two questions based on this. Um, mm -hmm. Where where can you get um, the full listing of masonry boxed and uh, Richard mentioned in bootstrap mm -hmm. docs. So uh, Richard, I'm, I'm guessing the bootstrap documentation within Joomla or um, a no, bootstrap so, so general, there's, bootstrap there's one. No, no, that's um, this classes are not uh, referring to bootstrap. Um, these classes are from Krasupaya that use uh, CSS grid. And um, these classes can be found in the PR, which introduces these classes. And I share the link with you afterwards. Bye, great. I just and tell you uh, what is possible here. And the other question um, was, hold on, there was another question. And where is the default site grid code? Is that gonna be also in the link that you're sending me? Um, the full CSS grid code, which file is that in? Uh, it's in uh, CSS grid.css. Okay. And, and here's the default CSS code uh, from the Kasupaya template, at least for the main uh, thing. I think the block classes are somewhere else, but you can find it in the CSS files of Kasupaya. Okay. Perfect, thank you. Good classes to show, uh, you're welcome. Uh, so we had the columns, columns uh, two to, to four, we have masonry, we have boxed, we can also remove the box, then uh, it's not in, inside of a box. Um, and then we have some classes for the images, I can, say that I want to have an image left or right. Uh, let's do here columns one and image minus left. Save it. And when I reload it now, I have the image on the left side. I can do the same with image right. If I reload it now, the image is on the right side. And I can put the image at the bottom. And then the image is at the bottom. And you did not need to make any changes to the uh, block. You, you don't have to do a block override. It's all done by CSS grid, and that's the real power of CSS grid. And I'm really happy that, that we are using it here. Um, there's one more setting we can add here. That's the image ultimate. And image, I think I have to add the first class at least. Let's see, I did not test this yet. It's not safe yet. Yeah, so it works. So here the first image is on the left, the second is on the right. That's the image alternate class that we are using here. 
And you can, of course, add any custom classes you want here and define it in the user CSS. Um, yeah. Yeah, I said I will, I will share the link to the classes afterwards. And you have something similar in the article. If we click on here on read more, you have here the image on the left side. And you can set this in the article settings. What is this about your homepage? Articles. About your homepage, it's here. And I can add here and the images and links float start or float end. And if I reload it now, I'm always too fast. Now it's on the on the right side with float end. Uh, yeah, and you could maybe add here uh, image circle class and define inside your user CSS that the image should be clipped. Um, but um, yeah, you have to add it in the user CSS file. That's all for now, I show you something. I used my website as a script. I updated here a blog post just today for, for this presentation today. And you can find it at coolkitcreations.com on the blog, um, how to customize your Casupaya template. And I have here um, all the screenshots where you'll find something, what you can change. Uh, the module positions of Cassiopeia. Um, I have here also, it's everything what I talked about. I have here also some CSS basics for you so you can learn a little bit how CSS code is written and what you have to look for if you write CSS in general. Then I have here some popular CSS instructions and helpful links like the gradient generator, uh, uh, what is padding, what is margin, um, what can also generate a box shadow here. Then I have my example user CSS file I showed you with the code and you can download the code also. Um, then I have here some more links uh, to help you with CSS, like the web font helper, um, Google fonts, um, how you find nice colors here, uh, nice color schemes. If you're not sure if you should follow my examples from today or not. So you can select here some colors. Then I have here something about the CSS grid and the classes I just used in the block. Image alternate box and so on. Um, the classes you can use in the articles the link to the CSS grid online class from Westboss, um, the link to the explanation for Casupaya from Joomla 51, um, the CSS grid file inside Casupaya. Um, there's a really nice Casupaya demo page on casupaya.joomla.com. I should open the links in the window. Um, so here's also a lot of help. I think Viviana made this website. Kudos to Viviana. And um, here's the information about adding a custom JavaScript file. And many thanks to Viviana, Astrid and Hagen. They wrote very nice articles about um, what is possible and I, had almost just to compile everything. And very important, there's this, uh, this upcoming changes in, in Joomla 4.1. 
and um, I think it will be merged uh, already this week. So have a look on it and um, test, comment, uh, add your feature requests, and so on. Thank you. Thank you. I think everyone is so super, super excited with everything you just shared with us. And uh, so thank you all for coming.